Hey folks, it's Chad here at Airstream of Greensboro. As you can see behind me, I have the 2023 Rangeline with the pop top. Uh, I have already reviewed and done a series of videos on the Rangeline without the pop top. I'll link that playlist above. The question I wanna to ask today and the question I wanna to answer today, is the pop top version of the Rangeline the version to get? Let's find out. Now, starting with the front of the range line, it is on the ProMaster chassis, as you can see. Now, the, the ProMaster chassis is the fastest growing uh, part of the Class B market. Now, starting with the ProMaster, you're gonna have the Pentastar V6 engine here. It's mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission. You are gonna get with Airstream pr pretty much every option that you can possibly order from Ram. Airstream has ordered it, ordered it that way. So that means you've got parking uh, sensors, you've got adaptive cruise control, you've got lane parture, you've got uh, collision avoidance. Uh, so basically all the array of safety features that you want in a van that you're gonna be carrying your family around with. Uh, now your mirrors are gonna also fold in with the ProMaster. You can see at the top there, there's a camera for all your uh, safety features. Uh, very large window. One thing I did notice about this windshield it's very low. The whole front of the motorhome is low. So you have really good visibility out the front of the motorhome. And uh, one of the things I like about the power folding mirrors is both the top and the bottom are also powered. With the side of the ProMaster, one of the things I want to point out is this particular color choice. Now there's two color choices for the outside of the ProMaster motorhome with Airstream. And you're going to have this graphite color. It's kind of a real dark metallic um, really nice looking color one of the things i really like about this color when you're looking at the this plastic bit here that's kind of a protection uh, it blends in really well along with the, the the black plastic bumper and that is one thing that airstream has chosen to do is not paint this black plastic material there there are some other manufacturers that do paint that and you just have to kind of be the judge yourself uh, to me the painted version of that it looks like, well, they, it looks like they painted plastic. That's basically what it looks like. So I, I do like that choice. I'm, I'm curious to see how well that black holds up to the sun over time. Uh, of course, I've been doing it for a while, so I'm sure it'll be fine. You do have really nice aluminum rims that are from Ram, both in the front and the back. You've got this really nice running board. And one thing you're going to immediately notice when you step up to the ProMaster with the range line is how low the step-in is for this particular motorhome. Now, this step makes it even easier to get in, but it's very easy just to step right in. Like, you're not necessarily doing that with uh, the interstate the Airstream has. I also like this grab handle. It's easy to step into. They also give you a, a cool spot to tether your dog down to if you have a dog with you, and they can just kind of... Now, with the ProMaster, you're going to have the push button to be able to unlock and lock the doors when you walk up because you do have the push start uh, function with the key so there's not a key that you're gonna you know stick in the door now you are gonna have a manual awning right here uh, now this is the the crown manual awning uh, this is one i've seen on quite a few other class b vans now there's a lot of discussion and i'm sure you're going to see it in the comments about it being manual and not powered uh, i think this the, it was a design choice for airstream in the sense that uh, that customer that's buying this and looking at this may not really care that it's not powered. And the truth is, if you're out uh, in the wilderness, you're boondocking, and you don't really have a lot of power source. Now, I'm going to talk about the power that this has, but you don't need to turn the power on to run the awning now. I'm going to do an awning demonstration here in a second. But kind of moving on, this right here is just where you connect your awning. You're also going to have one in the back as well. Uh, now, that can also, the legs can come down and be uh, tent pegged into the ground if you want to do it that way. Now this door is not powered on the interstate. That is an option um, that you can do with the with the uh, Sprinter chassis and Airstream does that with all the interstates. There's not an option for that on the range line. Neither is it our option for powered seats. So you're not going to see powered seats on this and you're not going to have a power door. But I will say this door is quite a bit lighter than what we see on the Sprinter chassis. So it's not that hard to open. You also have this really nice screen that you can pull. Oh, there's some plastic here protecting the floor. Screen that you can pull all the way across. 
and a really nice kind of cool morning like today. The sun's a bit hot, but other than that, it's a really nice morning. There's a good breeze. You could turn the fantastic fan on and then have this closed to keep any uh, bugs out and have a nice breeze going through. And that just kind of pulls open. I'm gonna close this door back again, just so you can see here. Now this is an all electric coach. So they give you a 110 power plug there. And that's kind of a dual purpose. Most RVs are gonna have a 110 outlet on the outside of the coach. Part of why Airstream put that there is you have a 110 induction cooktop in there. It's a one burner cooktop. You can bring that outside and, uh, and plug in outside and cook outside. So that's kind of a cool feature that they give you there. This window here, for a lot of manufacturers out there that I've seen, they'll replace this window to give you a way to open and get some breeze. So Airstream did that as well. This, this part of the window will open so you're, you're able to get a nice breeze, cross breeze through. You can do the same thing on the other side. But they didn't put plastic here, which is what I have seen other, a lot of other man manufacturers do. This is actually glass. So they replaced this glass here. This glass and the glass on the door are from Ram. So that's original. This piece right here is the one that they replace at the factory with Airstream. And I wanna demonstrate the awning real quick. And the first thing I'll do is go around to the back. And then this does extend out to give you, you know, make it a little bit easier, especially for, for those who have, uh, those of us who are a little short. And it's gonna kinda go up and twist into place. And then now it's locked in place. Easy to put in. Not as easy to get to take out, but once you've done it a few times, you get used to it. And then from here, it's just a matter of rotating it out. And it's like, there's no effort here. I'm not, I'm not utilizing my, my big, strong muscles to run this out. I think anybody, even a kid could do this. So it's going to run out. You can see it's coming down. That is because you'll actually lift this with the arms. Now it's Gerard style to me in the sense that there's cables running up into these two, to that arm and that arm, I'm not sure if you can see it. And to take it out, you're gonna kinda go up. See, see what I mean? There it is. And it comes out. So it's basically this T right here. The T kinda goes up and then it can turn and it has a place where it sits down. So it's in there. So as you're turning, it's not wanting to pop out. But then you gotta kinda lift up and turn it so that it, you know, it's kind of going like that, turn it so that it can kind of fall back out. So now that I've got it extended, there's arms that are stored up in the front part of the awning. There's a little flip, flip out right here. So I'm gonna flip that out. That allows me to pull the arm out. And I can take this arm and you'll do turn, let's see, that way, like that. And you can go down and I take, take it down and then hit peg it to the ground here. The other option I have is to bring it around and then turn it in. And there's that connection point that I talked about on the side of the coach, it connects into there. And you've got a little pull out. So this is gonna allow you to take it up to where you might want it. And then you're gonna push this forward and that locks the arm into place. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'll come over, push this out. And now I've got my awning in place. Now, this isn't an awning that, you know, like the zippy awnings on the flying clouds and the caravels and the bambies where it can really handle a little bit of breeze. Uh, these arms aren't doing that. They're basically just helping keep uh, the awning up in the air. So if you get a good breeze coming in, big truck coming by, if you have some breeze that comes into place, a really windy day, um, you're gonna wanna put this back up. And then the other rule of thumb, and this is 100% of the time, no matter what RV you are in, if you leave the campsite, put the awning away, never ever leave the campsite with the awning out. That is just asking for disaster. So I'm gonna put this back, put the awning back up. First thing I wanna do is lower this side down. And then lower this side down. It's very light. Like there's not any, any, you know, there is weight to it, but it's light. And then this, this part here just lifts up and then the awning can come out. So from here, I want to get this channel facing up. So that channel facing up. I'm going to turn that up, 
put it right in and then from here it folds into place and again as i mentioned we're going to lift this upward and then we can lift that right out don't let this go you want to hold on to this because it will slide into the side of your motor home and scratch it up and, and we'll all be very sad so then this opens again you want to face and I, what i was talking about is where this is that connection so this channel you want to face up so we're going to turn it up that allows us to be able to fold this in there's a little spot for this to sit inside of and from there we're just going to push it in close it in now these are in place they've got nice holders here that are going to hold them in place can you see me yep and we'll go right up into here and we want it to come right there now it's setting in place so i can run the only back in now this takes a little bit more effort than the going outside you know you're getting a little bit of workout you're getting some calories you're burning some calories you can't burn calories when you're just holding a button on a powered awning and our delivery truck is leaving now and that's in place so we'll kind of push it up about midway you can kind of feel when you're up in like no man's land and then you turn it and it slides right out and hopefully you can see me doing that i think you can your video by yourself you're kind of guessing what's actually in view and not and then shrink this back down and this just stores right back up in there that is how you use the truly sweden crown awning by lci now as i start talking about the back i want to mention a couple of things uh, with airstream and greensboro we are part of the largest airstream group of dealers in the country we sell more airstreams every year than any other co uh, company or dealership group that is out there uh, what that means for you when you call me i can get you pretty much any floor plan that's out there in a relatively quick amount of time and it may be within a week uh, if it's something special i can generally grab that fairly quick as well because we have a very large inventory that we're able to pull from that includes the range line i've got range lines that are available that will be offline uh, within the next few months so if you're interested in the range line feel free to reach out i'll be happy to help you now speaking of the range line of course you've got a spot for um, your license plate to go it does have a hitch you are you are able to tow roughly four thousand pounds and it does have the seven pin and four pin plugs already integrated and built in really nice airstream does add the skid bars i'm not sure if you can see that on that video but i'll get a shot of that for you and then there's really nice hinges on this door here it's only going to open to about here just to keep you from going into the awning there now up here you're going to have of course your marker lights that are required but then there's a backup camera that shoots kind of down a traditional backup camera that you're used to seeing on a motorhome but the second camera which is hard to see is out the top kind of right beside that center marker light and it's shooting kind of straight out and that is your digital rear view mirror and i'll show that here in a second uh, i'm going to open this and as i mentioned this is going to go to about right there there's a stopper back there that keeps that from opening uh, any further and then this door opens you know quite a bit all the way around um, one thing i do like you can see the cable here for all of your brake lights and your different lights and different things that it needs to power that actually pulls itself right into the door so there's not anything hanging as you close the door uh, it actually pulls right in i think that's a really cool feature you're gonna have these molly panels this just has the ability to hang things here you can add bags here you can attach things to this there's all kinds of all kinds of accessories that work with this uh, there is no storage like you can't go down behind it then you've got a little bit of a pocket there same thing on this side a little bit of a pocket right there now this is where your fresh water tank is it's up here inside the coach so if you're out there in a cold day uh, the water will stay warm as long as the coach is staying warm um, and then there's a little light that's motion sensed right there that's where you feed that it's gra gravity fed and then on this side you're going to have another 110 outlet that you can use off the back of the coach this does come with a uh, air compressor for blowing up the tire so if you were going off road and wanted to lower the tire pressure on your tires to get more grip you've got an onboard compressor it's a powered compressor 
uh, that you can plug in there and then use that to uh, inflate your tires back up. And then your battery disconnect is here. It is a manual disconnect, unlike the interstate where it's a push button. Uh, and then it's like a remote solenoid that cuts it on and off. This one, you're just gonna literally turn that switch on and off to fully cut the battery off. And then you have another motion sense light there. Now this is also giving you a great view into the motorhome of the garage style setup. So you've got L tracks here, so you can attach things here. There's a new bracket that Airstream developed that you will let you put a bike right in here and it connects right into that bracket. So you can store a bike back here and you could probably put two back here uh, if you kind of you know, arrange the handles well enough. And then the other thing is you can go all the way up to basically the back of the passenger seat all the way to the front. So if you wanted to load up uh, you know, a kayak or something of that nature, you've got the room to really put that in there and you do have some tie downs. Now, now coming around to the non camp side of the coach, this is the, the business side of the, pro, the uh, range line. You do have two exhaust pipes here. One is gonna be for your gasoline powered generator. The other is for the gasoline powered uh, hot water heater and furnace. And I'll talk more about that in the inside once we move inside. And then integrated kind of one of those hidden style exhaust pipes is right behind the coach. And that is something that Airstream actually does. I'm not sure if they do it themselves or they pay Ram to do it, but they actually have them route the exhaust all the way out the back. Uh, I'm not sure that if every manufacturer does that, with you know, Winnebago, whoever, but I do know that Airstream is doing that. So that pulls out and it's actually back here, not off to the side. Uh, you do have the smart plug system with the Airstream and pretty much everything Airstream is developing now is gonna have the smart plug on it. The biggest thing about that, and I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug it because we do have plenty of battery power. But the thing I love about this is you have, let's see if I can get it in the camera, these kind of the connection point is just these you know, levers, buttons that you're gonna push in. So it just snaps in place. And then when you wanna take it off, you just pull, you know, push those in and it pulls right out. You saw how easy it was for me to pull that out. It also has a light right here. This light will tell you, and it gives you kind of the different things as far as what it's gonna tell you. Uh, if something's swapped, the neutral swap, there's a dangerous ground condition, uh, condition um, and then everything off, there's no power. And then if it's just a blue light, normal power condition. Now, this isn't a surge protector. Uh, it's limited in what it can tell you, but it is something that when you plug into the pole at the campground, you can see in here to see, okay, just the blue light's on, this is good to go. That should be a green light because green means go, but it's a blue light. Easy to plug in, it's very easy to use. As, I, as you can see, that's plugged in, like we're ready to go. I'm not fussing with the, the little nut that's gotta be screwed on. So I love that about it. Now, one other thing you're gonna see with the ProMaster is there's no connection points on the side here. Uh, it's clean, it's sleek. Everything's either below, would you see the smart plug or the exhaust pipes here, or it's actually integrated behind this door. Now this door, it was in my five things I disliked about the range line. I'll uh, link a card above so you can watch that video if you would like. And I talk about this door just because it is, there is taking a little bit of effort to get that to unscrew. Behind this door, you do have a light right there so you can hook up at night. You've got your uh, black tank flush, your city fill, which does have the pressure regulator in it. I said in past videos to put a, a pressure regulator in front of that. Don't do that. I was wrong about that. Just use the pressure regulator that is built in. And then you've got an outside shower that is right here. This little line here has a magnet connected to it so when you are camping you can open up open this up all the way and magnetize that and then below you're gonna have your black and gray tank so with the range line ProMaster a lot of your ProMaster chassis will have a cassette toilet so you've got something you pull out and you carry your waste and dump it and you know something uh, with range line they did not want that they felt like most of the market in the US would prefer to have a black tank. And so that's what you have. You've got a true black tank and a true gray tank. Remember to always pull black first and then your gray tank. And then on this side, you have your other window that is for your cross ventilation. So this will open. Remember, this is the, the window that they replace the Airstream. The other two, well, this one is from Ram. 
they also replaced this front one to give you another window right here. So you've got two windows on this side you can open you know, outside of your, you know, your, your driver's side window. Now I wanna move, as I kind of move to the inside, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the bed system back here. So the bed is able to go up. If you watched one of my early, earlier range line reviews, it's the silver one. It's the first one I put out. I did not understand how this bed worked. So I talked about how dumb it was. I take all that back. It's not dumb. It, could they do it better? Is there a better system out there? Probably. Um, but this is unique in the sense it's unique for Airstream It's unique for the pro master, uh, just line of class B's. Uh, so it can be up in this kind of up arrangement, which allows you to be able to put things here in the garage and travel uh, with things that are tall. But when you put this out, you don't lose your garage. Grab it. There we go. So it's going to kind of come out and you want to keep it somewhat bent as you're connecting it in place and then let it set down. And then this just folds down and you've got a really nice large bed that you can sleep on. And they do give you a step right here. So if you're wondering like how, like, how do I get in the bed? There's a step right there. So it is quite easy to climb into and it is fairly comfortable. I mean, for, for a bed, you know, I would sleep this way so that, no, sleep the other way, sleep this way. Yeah, that way that's at my feet. And then you've got a, a charger here, wireless charger for your phone and one over top. There are switches there so you can turn lights on and off. And yeah, the reading lights are right here right there so they're definitely intending for you to sleep on this side air conditioner is right here so if you like to sleep to the sound of the ac at night you're gonna love this setup because the ac is right there it is a coleman mock so uh so it's not as loud as uh, your dematics out there but uh, it is louder now this point here is going to be where you would mount a tv if you wanted to mount a tv there's a hole that's already drilled right here with a uh, little wire um, pass-through cap thing. That, that This is pre-wired for an antenna on top, uh, and it's pre-wired for air-connected. Um, so they kind of in the envision here is that you would probably just use your iPad to watch TV. But if you wanted a TV, there's already a spot. It's already got the connection points to run. Put a bracket here, and you've got an inverted circuit right here and you already get the pass through to be able to run up to the cable antenna. Now you have a lot of storage back here as well on both sides. These actually lock into place as well. And then as you saw, put this back away. I've switched back to my handheld uh, to do the inside. It's just easier to do a handheld on the inside. We're gonna jump on the inside. I'll go through the inside and we'll talk about the pop top uh, as well. So let's move to inside as we move in. You're gonna see your seats here. Now these do swivel around. Both of these will swivel around. And then uh, you have the ability to sit all four at the table. That's a fantastic setup. You've got the great cockpit, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a second. Uh, kitchen area, very nice, well-appointed kitchen area for this size coach. You've got the tower of power right there. It does have uh, two USB plugs and then uh, three plugs there that is not inverted so if you're wondering no you can't use that with the inverter there is that other plug on the back that's on the inverter uh, so you are able to use that and then this top drawer is going to be your inverted or inverter <laughs> your true induction cooktop so this will come out and just sit right here and then you can plug that into the tower of power and then you would want to use a uh, induction approved uh, cook cookware with this and then of course you can move this outside as well and this is like the drop-in style like you're gonna feel the foam um, underneath this because this was designed to drop into place uh, of course it works great in this this uh, setup as well so then when you don't need it, it just goes back into that drawer that drawer will soft close right into place and then these latches double as a easy way to pull the drawer out but it also actually latches that drawer closed. And then you're gonna have good storage all throughout the kitchen area. Of course, a uh, trash can there, a place for uh, paper towels. They do go to the, to the trouble of actually drilling in the spots for these trash cans. The trash can actually stay in place. Now this looks like a double drawer, but it just looks that way uh, to keep it symmetrical. 
uh, a little, that's fake. You've got another pull out there. These are all full extension as you can see. And then nice large one there. And the little uh, cutting board there. And then you've got a surface mounted stainless steel sink with a faucet that, you know, kind of turns around. Not a pull, out, not a pull down one, but uh, you know, a nice faucet, nice and high and out of the way. You've got great little cubbies here for storing things like spices and whatever else you might want to use in the kitchen. Instead of doing a traditional radio in this, they did this Bluetooth wireless speaker. It has a little Allen wrench that you're not going to want to lose. It's a key one, uh, but you can take out this back screw here and it'll allow this to pull in and out. So you can push this back and the radio will, or the speaker will come out. It's Bluetooth so you can play any tunes that you want to right there. And it's got a nice little place to store as well. The goodie box that comes with uh, the range line has the box in there with all of your uh, cables and things that you might need. Uh, get some storage, more storage above. And of course with these, ca these cabinets here, this is that light Italian plywood that Airstream uses and a lot of their uh, coaches, pretty much everything. That's the air compressor I was talking about. It's very small, fits right in there. You got more storage there. Now this is the ladder for the pop top, which I'll show you in a little bit, but kind of to give you a precursor, right there's the pop top and the opening there. Uh, so this would be storage in the non pop top. In the pop top, it's where your ladder fits, which does fit there quite nicely. It's like they designed it that way on purpose. And then this has the really nice Firefly system that's right here. You can turn all your lights on and off, see all your tanks, um, battery top off. That will actually crank the generator and just charge the battery up and then turn the generator back off. You've got some gen settings there. Your battery's there. You can turn your AC on and off, which that was on right now. Uh, turn all your lights on and off. This gets into the generator and the power system. Now this has quite the power system. Um, it's going to have, of course, solar on top. The solar is actually on top of the pop top. You can see that there as far as what the solar is doing right now. And it's just, there's one battery. Go back there. Uh, now, it also has a 270 amp hour battle born lithium battery. So this isn't just a battery setup system that you might see um, in, you know, like in an all electric coach where the... Um, the battery is all of your power. It's not that type of thing. So I want to show you've got inverter controls here. You've got uh, generator controls here. You can go into your auto gen start. So this does have auto gen start, which I'll go more into in a little bit when I talk about the power, but there's all kinds of things that you can do to have this kick on. You can have it kick on for the HVAC load. You can have it kick on for low battery. You can have, you can set start times, and end times. You can set quiet hours if you're in a campground that doesn't allow generator to run uh, at certain times. You have the ability to, to do that. Of course, you can just turn the generator on and off right there. Um, that's just showing you that gen start is off. Now we've got shore power coming in and we can tell it how much power that's coming, which is 30 amps. And it goes into the transfer switch, the breaker box, the inverter charger, and then the house battery is 100%. So that's full 270 amp hours of battery. There are some inverter settings you can go here and control the inverter so that's all controlled within the firefly system and what's really cool about this system is you do have a mobile app that comes with it so you would download this app here you can scan this code there and it will take you to the app and then you can change this pin number to whatever pin number you want it to be to make it secure and then once you're in the app you're able to control Pretty much everything that you're seeing on the screen here from your thermostat with your AC system uh, to all your lights, your inverter, your generators, all that kind of stuff. So it's a really cool system. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the power system on here and here in a second. And then this is going to be the Timberline system. So this is your heating and uh, your water heater and your furnace is all controlled here. You'll just click these two buttons here, which actually turns... Uh, the heater on so that's going to be propane that's going to be the electric or not propane sorry this does not have propane that is going to be the gasoline fired part of the timberline system that is the electric element part of the system this is really the the gasoline power is really what's going to be providing the heat the electrical part of it is just maintaining temperature you're in the glycol you really got to have the actual heat on there's basically two zones here 
Zone one is gonna be up here in the front. Zone two is in the bedroom area. You just set your temperature when you want it to be and you can turn the system on and off. If you want hot water, you're gonna turn these on. If you want heat, you're gonna turn it on right there and then fan is set to auto. Now to kind of get back to the kitchen area, you have a microwave here. It is one of those fairly small microwaves as we see in a lot of RVs. It is not a induction uh, or not induction. It's not a convection. It's just a regular microwave. But this will run off of the 2000 watt inverter. So it's already plugged into that inverter. And you've got some more storage up top, including your inverted circuit here. And the nice thing is, um, if you wanna use your induction cooktop off the inverter, you can plug it in right here. And it's a thousand watt cooktop. You have a 2000 watt inverter, so you should be able to get away with that. And then you've got this very nice French refrigerator uh, you guys can tell me how to pronounce that name because I do not know. The refrigerator is 12 volts. It cools very well. It freezes very well. Even a little ice tray because they say you can make ice with this 12 volt refrigerator. A little pull out storage container there. And then this front here is not just white because white is nice. It's a nice color. Um, it is white because it's a marker board. You can write on that, write notes on that, and then accidentally wipe them off as you walk, walk by. Now this pull out here, I can only pull it that far because that far we've got plastic down, but that top opens to give you a little bit of storage underneath there. And then on this side, you've got, yeah, you guessed it, you've got doggy bowls. So you've got a spot to put uh, your water and food and you can store that away. But if you don't have an animal, so you're not gonna use it for that, then you can just take this out, store it somewhere or get rid of it. And then you can use that as a really nice uh, storage area. And then right here, you're gonna have what could be a wardrobe or adjustable shelves, mainly just gonna be adjustable shelves because I don't see a wardrobe arm right there. But adjustable shelves, so that is your pantry right there. And kind of give you just a shot the kitchen area from this side very nice kitchen area very well appointed for a smaller uh, class b pro master chassis now the shower slash bathroom so it is a wet bath most of your bees are going to be a wet bath uh, winnebago used to make one that had a dry bath in it but i don't even think they make that one anymore so the thing i'm going to say about this and yes i am going to step in the shower and yes i'm going to sit on the commode so stepping in the shower. So from the standpoint of the size of this, it is large enough. So as you've seen in the videos, I am not a small boy. I am a big boy. I'm about 5'10", probably 5'11", with shoes on. I fit in here fine. I, you know, I do hit my head on this thing, but I fit in here fine. Uh, if you're tall and you're like, hey, but I still wanna use this, that's fine, there's a seat. It's the commode. Just sit down on the commode and you can still take a shower. What I do like is this door that kind of comes around and hopefully you can see this well in the video. Um, it provides a lot more room in the shower as opposed to some of the other uh, class B's that I've been in. And then pulling around and say, okay, you've got your hot and cold nozzles to turn it on and off here. This is just a unique fold down uh, sink that they've given you. I feel like most people are just gonna use the sink in the kitchen because it's right there. But you've got this here, you can turn this on and off and then it stores away. And this is just gonna drain down uh, into this, which drains down into the floor. Uh, of course, it's got the movable shower head, so you can pull this and shower with it. And then as you can see, hopefully, I'm not sure how good my camera work is right now, but you've got a mirror here that pulls out and you can you know, address anything that you need to address with your face there. Uh, commode is in a good spot. Um, it sits a little high but plenty of room, you can close this door. Uh, I just shut the camera off. But you can close this door while you're sitting here and my knees aren't hitting anything. Even with the door shut, my knees don't hit. And you do have the little water protected um, toilet paper holder as well. And this is fiberglass. Um, it's a fiberglass style shower. Yeah, I mean, it works. And you do have uh, a heat source right there. So that is not quite nice. Yeah. And then stepping back out, you've got your windows that you can open. They're just going to slide that way. And 
I didn't show this, I talked about this, but you can turn all your lights on and off right there. Uh, ceiling lights, bath lights, uh, the owl. There's like cool lights that you can't see because it's so bright, but underneath there, you can turn the water pump on and you can start and turn on or turn off your generator from right there. That is the TV mount that I talked about earlier. I do like the aluminum accent piece they have there. Of course, it is an Airstream, so it's gonna have the aluminum roof or ceiling as well. Now this is your zone two. It's actually zone three. Zone two doesn't exist. That's zone three of your heat. And zone one is gonna be right there behind that really cool looking range line um, aluminum piece. So I like that. I like the aluminum ac accents they have. Now these are just vent holes to provide some air back to the systems that are stored behind these compartments here. Um, is all that is you've got good storage back here and of course more of that italian plywood right there boom push these down push these down and i'm gonna set this up so it looks like the dinette and i'll be right back okay i'm back this is the dinette setup so i can sit here i can sit there i can sit there uh, now, one thing about these seats, you do have the one armrest that pulls down on the one side. You don't have it on both sides. Love for them to do that in the future. You've got a window that opens there. You've got reading lights here that you can turn on and off. Now, this table has a cool party trick, okay? So, I can pull, where is it? Le lever right there, and it will go straight. So, now it's just more of a straight table does have two levels. That's a little bit odd, but it's got two levels. It's okay. You can still play cards this way. You still have dinner this way. And then I can go one more turn to there. And if I pull this back a little bit, it makes for a really cool um, extension to the kitchenette area. So now this all becomes part of the kitchen. While you're prepping and cooking, you have your induction cooktop right there. You've still got somewhere to prep and do things. So that's a great idea. And then, of course, the last is it pulls in and then it kind of goes out of the way and now it's out of the way. The one thing I do want to mention about this table, you don't want to just push like this um, to try to move it. It does move forward and backwards. It's got to to make room for the chair to move around. Um, to move it, the trick is you'll, with one hand, you'll lift it up. With the other hand at the hinge, you'll push it. So from there, I can just push it. If you try to lift it and pull it from here, it'll end up breaking one of these brackets. Uh, so you don't want to do that. Now, there's Velcro in all these windows. You, you get in your kit with the range line uh, a little piece that will cover this window up. You get uh, magnetic covers for your front windows here. So you can cover all those windows and get your privacy, as well as those windows in the back that I so showed you. Uh, there's also ones that cover those windows. Now, the very back, you've got the whole uh, line that folds down that I didn't show you, but I will show you that comes down um, that you can, you know, that basically blocks everything at that point. There's actually one built into it as well, so you can open uh, that way. And then pull this back. It's an angle. This is a decent angle. Okay. Uh, so the pop top. Uh, pop top, there's a little button you push here. Once you release that button, you can push it up. I have found that, it, that you need to either be taller than me or uh, be stepping on this step here. You can push it up that way or get the ladder out. And I don't know if this was like by design, but the ladder kind of pushes back into there and then it comes out like so. But what I did to get this, this up is just take the top here, there's like feet, and then from here, I just use this to push it up. Just just like that. I just pushed it right up. And uh, that, that ended up being about the easiest thing to do. Uh, it, is, it is a little bit heavy to push up. Um, so something that I would recommend if you're thinking, hey, I want a pop top, um, you know, give me a call. Ask me if I've got a pop top in stock and, uh, and come by and you can try to push the pop top up. Um, and then, you know, try that because it, it is a little bit, it is a little bit difficult. It's a little bit heavy. Uh, it does have uh, shocks that help push it up once you get to a certain point that it kind of pushes itself up. Um, and then you've got these straps that, that kind of hang down right here. These are to, to pull it down when you're ready to put it away. So that's nice as well. 
Uh, and then there's a strap that goes across the middle that you'll probably see in some B-roll. That strap is there to pull the sides in as you're lowering it. So that's pretty nifty too. And then there are lights up there that's also nice. Now as far as the ladder goes, uh, you're gonna fold it out like so. It helps if I do have the bottom at the bottom and the top at the top. Uh, the ladder can hold 250 pounds. Um, and the bed itself can hold 500 pounds. So yes, I can go up into the bed. So you're just gonna climb up into the bed and then climb out of the bed. Now I've got, there are little latches things here that will swing around to kind of latch this ladder in place to make it uh, harder for it to come off as you run up and down. Now kids will love this, uh, absolutely love this. I would love this as a kid. I can just see my cousin Sterling and me uh, climbing it all over this and absolutely loving it. There is a fantastic fan up there to help pull cold air up and heat up uh, while you're up there sleeping. Uh, and then you can open, there's windows that can open. There's LED lights that are running in there. It's really nice. There's even reading lights as well. And I'll show all of that as well. So it's still a cool setup. It works really well. And then from here, if I want to pull it back down, I'm just going to pull these two straps down and close it that way. So yeah, pretty sweet setup. All right, so going up into the pop top. Yes, I am using the ladder. <laughs> so you can see the LED lights there. The switch for that is right here. And then you have uh, USB power as well right here. And you have these really cool um, night lights so you can read at night right there. And they have more USB. So there's a total of four USB plugs up here. You'll wanna make sure you put that down before you put the pop top down. Now the pop top, just like all the pop, you know, this isn't unique to, this pop top's not unique to Airstream. Um, this is made by Lippard. Uh, a lot of manufacturers use this pop top. It gets smaller towards the end, so your feet are gonna go that way. Your head is gonna be up here. Um, that way you don't feel claustrophobic because I would totally feel claustrophobic. And I would wake up in the middle of the night and bang my head against that, uh, the roof there. So yeah, definitely be aware of that. And then there's also a window hit the front that you can open. Um, and there's a window right there and a window there. And then you got the fantastic fan. Get some air moving. There we go. And it already has uh, the vent cover too. So very nice touch there. So that is the pop top. Um, it's not just battery and it's not just a generator. There's no propane, so it's one fuel source. Uh, this is one of my favorite things about this coach because it's kind of a hybrid. You kind of get the best of both worlds. So with a traditional, say, E1 package that Airstream has on the interstate, that's only a battery. It's a humongous 12 kilowatt hour battery um, that only charges either off of shore power or off of the uh, engine, off the alternator while you're going down the road. Uh, and it takes, you know, it can take, well, I think at highway speeds that'll charge pretty quick, but, but it take a bit to charge that. So once you deplete that battery, it well, it's depleted. And you don't have the ability, say you're out dry camping with a full, um, you know, electric system, uh, the voltage system, you don't have the ability if you're out dry camping and you're, you're in a remote area, you're hiking and stuff to charge that battery back up. Solar is not enough. Like the solar on that is just to trickle charge it. Um, it can kind of help keep it topped off, but solar is not going to charge that battery up. There's not enough solar there. So the hybrid system, which is what this is, I think this is the way of the future to have a big battery, but still have a generator. And that's what the range line has. So you've got a gasoline fired Onan generator underneath here in that kind of middle section, but middle rear of the coach, you can see it underneath. Um, and then there's a gasoline fired um, water heater and furnace. That's just, there's two parts of it. One part is kind of in the front of, like just in front of the uh, generator down there. And then right down below the bed, there's a 270 amp hour battery. Now I think that it would be fairly easy to add another battery under the seats up here because there's some storage under the seats I didn't mention. Uh, oh, you know what? Let me show you that storage real quick. So there's some storage there, and there, of course, there's power right there and USB. I didn't mention that, but under the under the um, the this couch seat seating area, 
There's also a good bit of storage right there. That's a, that could fit another 270 amp hour battery just right there. You could actually add two 270 amp hour batteries. The other thing uh, we think is that there's enough room back here. When I say we, I mean my service manager. Uh, there's enough room to re be able to run cabling underneath the tub of the shower to be able to get to uh, the rest of the power system that's up here uh, towards the the non-camp side of the back of the coach. Uh, so uh, you got 200 70 amp hour battle-borne lithium battery. It has the the uh, heater in it so it can maintain temperature. Uh, there's also an upgraded 100, 100 amp hour a charger for this system too. So whether you're coming off the alternator or off a of shore power, it'll charge that or the generator, it'll charge that battery up fairly quickly. And that is one of the things that I really like about this system is I can run everything but the AC. Now I can't run the AC. You can run the AC off the Volta system. Um, you can't do it on this one. They could do it if they wanted to. They could do it, but not currently. In the current way that it's built, um, you can't. You can't run the AC, but you can off the generator. I can run everything else though. I can run all of my 12 volt accessories, all my 12 volt lights. I can run my refrigerator off of that 270 amp hour battery. I can run the microwave off of it through the inverted circuit because it's a 2000 watt inverter. I can run the induction cooktop off of that battery. So if I just added another one of those bat batteries, I would double the amount of time that I can dry camp before I'd even need to turn uh, the generator on. And on top of that, I've got, already got a 100 amp hour battery or 100, excuse me, 100 amp hour charger hundred amp hour, hundred amp charger, whatever that, yeah, hundred amp charger, um, to, to charge that, those two batteries that were really quickly. So I, I would probably do that. That would be one of my first up, upgrades I would do to it. But currently it has one 270 amp hour battle born lithium battery. So follow me there. Off of that battery, I can run the gasoline fired furnace and hot water heater. Cause it's 12 volt as far as its computer goes. I can run the microwave. I can run my induction cooktop. I can run the refrigerator. I can run the water pump. All of my lights can all run off of that. My awnings manual, so I don't have to worry about it. And then the only thing I'm not able to run directly off of that battery already from the factory is the air conditioner. Air conditioner is the only thing I don't. I can't run off of that. But I still have a generator, so I could kick that generator on on a hot day. And I'm actually in here, and it's not enough just to have the fantastic fan on and all the doors open and windows open and get a breeze that way. Uh, I want the AC on. I can still run it. I just got to cook the generator on and I can run it and it's gasoline fired. It's not propane, gasoline fired. So as long as I've got a full tank of gasoline, when I stop at wherever I'm going, I can run for days, days, maybe weeks off of one full, ga one full tank of gas uh, wherever I'm going because I can do most of my stuff just off of my battery and then with the Firefly system You've got the auto gen start and one of my favorite features is the battery top off So you can program it to top the battery off. So say you're like, hey, let's go hiking uh, We're gonna go on a hike um, It's a beautiful day or whatever, but when I, when I get back I want my I want the battery fully charged So we're ready for the night, right? So I can turn on the battery top off what it will do is it will crank the generator automatically It'll top the battery off to 100%, and then once it's at 100%, it'll turn the battery off. I mean, it turn, not the battery off. Well, it probably does turn that off too, but it'll turn the generator off. And so the battery is 100%, turns the generator off, and now when you get back from your hike, or you're, you know, you're swimming, you're fishing, whatever it might be, you've got a fully charged battery, and you're ready to go for the nighttime, you don't even have to run the generator, because at nighttime, it's a little bit cooler, you just open all the windows and you know, sleep with a sheet, um, and you're good to go. So that is something I really like about this system because you've got the Firefly system with auto gen start. You have a gasoline fired generator. You have a gasoline fired hot water heater and furnace. And you've got a massive 270 amp hour lithium battery. I, and I'm sitting in the cockpit. I've got, I've got the engine on. We've got a little bit of AC running. Is it be hot? It's a warm day today. It is quite a warm day here in North Carolina. Remember Airstream of Greensboro. Uh, North Carolina, we are the North Carolina dealer, the only uh, Airstream dealer in North Carolina, uh, longest running dealer in the country. We've been selling Airstreams longer than anyone else. Uh, we also have the number one parts department uh, in the country as well. If you heard, heard of uh, Out of Door Mark, that's us, uh, Airstream of Greensboro. We're the RV1 store here as well. Um, yeah, so we know a thing or two about Airstreams. 
So talking about the cockpit here, uh, let's see if I can get, make sure I get a good, um, there we go. Uh, a couple of things, as you can see, the rear view mirror, now you can turn this off, flip it down, and it's just, a, at that point, it's just a regular mirror, and then you flip it back up, and it's the camera that's shooting off the back. You've got a really nice infotainment. You've got a really nice digital dash. Um, now this doesn't, uh, it only telescopes. It doesn't go up and down, tilt. It doesn't tilt, okay? It only is telescopes. Now I didn't find that to really be a problem. It seems to be fine. Um, you've got your Havoc Control HVAC right here for the dash. That's gonna be separate from the main AC back there. And then really nice volume knobs. This all reminds me of RAM. You know, it is a RAM, uh, it's an FCA uh, product. This is probably in one of the other Dodge vans. It's not in my truck. I like this better than what's in my truck. I wish this was in my truck, but it's not in there. And you've got some USBs right there. So I'm gonna come in a little bit closer now so you can just see what I'm doing. Um, so this is kind of the main screen here. It gives you the option to see, kind of like CarPlay, um, your radio there. If you have your phone plugged in, it would be right there. And then um, your maps there. Now this is uh, Garmin. It's a Garmin map. It, it works really good. Like I used it for, um, for one of the trips that I went on just to get an idea of what it would feel like, you know, I just, you know, to know, be able to talk about it and be informative. And it, and it worked, I mean, it worked really good. I, I would almost just use this uh, instead of having my pl phone plugged in Apple CarPlay. Uh, forgive me, uh, Steve Jobs, but um, it, it, did it did work really good. Uh, now I love Apple CarPlay. I always want to use Apple CarPlay. Um, and this has it, you can plug it in right here and it go wired or you can do wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. There is a uh, little wireless charger right there, which works really good. And on one of the, uh, one of the ones I drove around, um, I actually connected my phone to it uh, so I could use the wireless CarPlay and it worked phenomenally. I mean, it just works so good. And that, that takes you back to home. Then you've got your media. So the media is gonna be you know, FM, XM, your phone, and then USB. Uh, of course it has uh, you know, FM, AM. It does have XM or radio and that's already installed. It's not something you've got to add on later. Uh, it, you know, you'll get your free you know, year or whatever subscription that it comes with. Um, and you can set your favorites along down here. And this is one of those systems where you can set favorites um, in multiple, uh, what do we call that? Multiple uh, sources, that's what that's called. So you can have FM in that one, AM in that one, you can have XM in there, and so forth, so forth. Um, and I like that. And then you've got a total of what, 12? No, 18? So you got a total of 18 that you can save. So you can hit that Fox News headlines there if you want to. Uh, ESPN Radio, you know, that's going to be part of your Sirius XM. It gives you the, the artwork. It's a fairly nice system. You can go in and browse different music, pop. You know, I want to see all the country stations. There's all the country stations. So it's a really nice system, especially considering that this is, you know, motorhome. And the thing, the thing I like about Airstream is I don't have to guess when you call and say, hey, does this have that great, uh, hey, Chad, does this have that great infotainment that you showed in your video? Yes, it has it. If it's Air Airstream, it has that great infotainment in it. Um, comfort is going to be the next one. So you can change, you know, where the air is going. You can change the temperature right there. You can turn your max air on and off there. Oh. That, that just got loud. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, turn max air on and off, uh, max heat right there, and then you can set your, phone, your, your uh, fan speed there. But you can also do all of that right down here too. So you don't have to use that. Now this isn't the, like you set the temperature kind of thing. You're just gonna set how cold you want it to be or how hot you want it to be. And then you turn your fan up and down right there. You also change all of those settings right down here as well. So you don't have to go into your infotainment to make those changes. The next thing over is going to be the the um, the maps there. It's very similar to to me to a um, uh, to, to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You know, it's a Garmin system, so you can look and see, find things around you. Like, hey, we need to get gas. So I can say, yeah, let's look for gas stations, and now it's going to look for gas stations that are that are nearby uh, based on Garmin's uh, maps, and then. Wow, this even gives me the gas price. However, it's doing that, I don't know. So this is a really, I mean, it's a really cool system that they're giving you. It's got the pinch zoom, so it feels like a tablet. Um, I can recenter. 
as far as search, I'm just going to hit search there. You can add your home, you can add your work, and then you can search just like, you know, with Apple CarPlay, you can search for a coffee shop or for food. And then of course you can just type in the directions that you want to go to as well. Um, so a very nice, um, GPS system, uh, you know, it does turn by turn. It also will give you, when you're using this GPS, it will give you directions in the center cluster as well. So that's, that's quite nice. Uh, the next thing ever is going to be phone. Uh, very, you know, you've seen that before you can make phone calls. Um, and then vehicle is going to give you some information about, uh, your vehicles, so a trip control settings. You can get into some of the vehicle settings. Um, you know, change things like whether it's kilometers or miles. You can set up multiple profiles here too. Um, your active safety stuff is going to be in here. Uh, for instance, like traffic sign, you can have it just be visual or you can have it to chime um, when it sees a new traffic sign. Drowsy alert, blind spot is all right there. Um, there's a trailer blind spot alert on this system. Uh, emergency braking settings are going to be right there or I guess it just pops down you can go to clock so there are quite a few things you can even change things about the navigation the voice uh, this does have the um, the ability to talk to the radio and tell it to do things which is also really nice um, and let's see there's not a whole lot of different like options but you can move this around and put different things down here if you want to and then the Apple CarPlay um, that's going to be Apple CarPlay. So if you've ever seen that before, you know what that is. Same thing with Android Auto. It does have a nice clock up there. Uh, you can change, um, set up user profiles. So that will save things like your favorite stations, all that kind of stuff. And so you can have multiple drivers right there. Um, and then there would be alerts. You've got the Wi-Fi stuff that's right there. You can set up a hotspot if you want to for 4G. Uh, it gives you a temperature outside. Feels like it's warmer than 71 degrees and that's the button you're going to hit if you want to talk to it and ask it to turn to a different station you can do navigation give it an address and it will take you to the address so a very cool setup there as far as infotainment goes it's very clean it's very sharp it works really well and then moving up to the mirror so that is that is your rear view camera you do have the ability let's see if i can find it right there yeah oh, that one so i can move it up and down a little bit so if i want it to be higher i can make it higher and then i can make it lower if i want it to be lower and then of course you can change the brightness uh works so well uh as you can see right there's a trailer moving behind us yep there's an airstream um i have heard people talk about that uh from the from their eyes like looking out at the road and then moving up to that is a little bit difficult um, for some folks, that's something to think about. I didn't really have any problems with that, but I, you know, I'm a little bit younger, uh, so my eyes my eyes can adjust, you know, fairly okay. So that's just something to know, to think about, or just to know. Then you've got the really nice digital cockpit. So just the center part of the dash is going to be digital. Of course, I've got all of the doors open. It gives you a odometer right there in the middle. Um, you can change that to be uh, different things. How did I do that? Yeah, trip your driver assistance you can see your tire pressures yes this does have tire, uh, tps uh, which you don't get on a lot of other motorhomes from other manufacturers but you get it on the promaster uh, you can see what's happening with audio you can see navigation right there and you see it loads the data i mean just look how cool that is that is so cool um i want this on my truck so and it will give you directions just like you're seeing them on the main radio uh, messages and then of course settings and then uh, home is going to be this screen here uh, you can do your your um, voice control there that will also control siri if it's plugged in you can answer calls start a call there this is going to be your adaptive cruise control settings here so regu regular cruise control adaptive cruise control if these are not here these three buttons you don't have adaptive cruise control <clears throat> and then moving kind of just parking brake there you've got your window buttons it is auto windows up and down maybe just down 
Yeah, auto windows down but not up on both sides. You can fold the mirrors in right there. Oh, hit the right button. And then you can control all all four mirrors. So both on on each side, there's two mirrors. Both of them are powered and you can control them from this switch right here. So I love that. That is just phenomenal to be able to change that bottom mirror from inside to the coach and not having to go outside. Uh, you do have your some of your light options here, your dash brightness. Turn single is gonna be, of course, on the left side <coughs> with your lights. There is auto lights, so you can just leave that on auto and let it do its thing. And then you've got your um, windshield washer on this side. That's all that is there. The, of course, the handle's right there. Push button start is right there. This side is gonna be, whatever you plug into here is gonna be connected to the radio. That is just for power right there. You've got good cup holders underneath, uh, good storage right there on each side, and there's storage in both doors right down there. Yep. And there's storage right there. A little bit, you know, little, little places I guess you could put things, and uh, that's about it as far as the dash goes. You've got SOS features right there. Uh, that's assistance. You can turn your dome lights on right there, uh, and that's just your... Um, if the doors open control there as far as the visors no mirrors these are very simple visors very utilitarian on both sides it does have the little strap so you can little vinyl straps so you can put things up there you do have a little grab handle for getting in and out as well as a grab handle here radio as far as the quality of the radio it's decent um you know it's a motorhome it works you can listen to music you can play audio books it is not necessarily going to be uh, the best sounding radio that you have ever heard. So I'm going to flip around here. Uh, this is really, uh, I mean, that's everything about the range line. Like this was a um, kind of full walk around in-depth view of the range line. Uh, if you have any questions on it, feel free to give me a call. Like I, I make these videos and I love connecting to, to, uh, to you guys. Uh, especially as you walk into the store and just say, hey, I've watched your videos. I mean, I really appreciate that. And uh, be sure to do that. And if you're in the market for an Airstream, for a range line or an Airstream travel trailer or one, one, any of the uh, touring coaches, like that's what I do. I love to connect people with the perfect floor plan, the perfect RV, get you the best rates, get you the best deals I can get you that's out there, currently out there on the market. I will do that for you. And, and as I mentioned, like we have the largest, I think we're at 12 Airstream stores within our network so I can pull from all of those all of the inventory so I can get about anything uh, within a good amount of time as well so if you've got to this point first of all thank you so much for watching this video thank you for subscribing and for liking and for commenting below if you have questions or thoughts on the range line feel free to throw those into the comments if you're looking for the specifications for the range line that's also going to be a link there in the uh, in the description you click on that and it'll take you straight to all the specifications and then all of my contact info is down there as well. I hope to see you soon. I hope you're having a great week. Other than that, we'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye.